Hey everyone and welcome to our lecture on simple machines, the lever. This is actually going to be the first video of two lectures. The first lecture is just going to focus on levers in general, uh, the different types of levers, and the second lecture is going to focus on some sample calculations. Um, all right, before we move on to talk about levers in this lecture, let's review really quick work and simple machines. So remember that work is when we apply a force to something over a distance, work equals force times distance. If you don't move it over a distance, you don't do any work. And a machine is anything that makes work easier. It can do that in one of three different ways. It can change uh, the force you're able to apply, the distance you're able to apply it over, or the direction of your force. not very good, but the direction of your force. So it can change your force applied, the distance you apply it over, or the direction of your force. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about the lever today. So what is a lever? A lever is a simple machine consisting of a rigid beam or rod pivoting on a fixed hinge or a fulcrum. So zooming back out to our man lifting the rock with our lever here, let's uh, look at these parts. We have our um, rigid rod here that is pivoting on a fixed point or a fulcrum. So here is the fulcrum. Um, this would be the rod. And we also want to identify some other things, such as the input force. This is where we uh, we call it the input force or the effort force. So this is where we apply our force to this machine. And then there's the output or resistance. So the output or resistance force, which would be this rock in this case. And then we want to be able to identify the length of an input arm versus an output arm. These are always measured from the fulcrum to where the force is applied. So the distance from where this force is applied to where it pivots on the fulcrum would be the input distance. And the distance from the fulcrum to the place where the output force is applied would be the effort, or sorry, the output or resistance arm. Okay, um, there's actually three different types of levers that we can talk about. First class, second class, and third class levers. Let's look at the first type, a first class lever. A first class lever is simply one where the fulcrum is in between the output force and the input force, or the effort force, which would be the input, and the resistance, which would be the output. So the lever that we just looked at with a man lifting the rock, that's a first class lever. Um, first class levers are kind of interesting in that they can either, depending on how they're set up, increase the amount of force applied or increase the distance it's applied over. So um, if I want to set up a lever that would increase my output force, I would apply the force here on an effort arm that is much longer than the resistance arm. Now, um, remember, work equals a change in energy. And energy can never be created or destroyed, which also means that work is conserved. We can never get more work out of a machine than we put in. Um, so we don't get something for nothing. What are we getting here? If I only apply a 10 Newton force as effort here, and let's say I get a 30 Newton force out, I can lift a 30 Newton rock with a 10 Newton force. I'm not getting something for nothing. So how is that happening? Well, if we look at the distance this moves, I would have to move the effort arm further than the output or resistance arm would move. Um, so I have to apply a smaller force, but over a larger distance. Or if I set up this lever the other way, so that I had a much longer resistance arm, a much longer resistance arm than the effort arm, then I would have to apply a very large force. I might have to apply a 30 Newton force 
to a lift a 10 newton block but as I lifted this I would only have to move the effort arm a short distance and the output arm would move a longer distance let's say uh, one foot over here would get three feet of movement over here um, so that's the first class lever let's look at some examples in real life real quick okay classic example is the teeter-totter with the fulcrum in the middle and uh, an output and resistance on either side another uh, example is actually your skull um, this one might be a little bit harder to see so I'm going to draw on this really quick um, the fulcrum is where the spine attaches to the skull you can think of the head kind of as a lever here the input force would be where this muscle pulls on the skull and of course it lifts the skull up um, in this direction when that muscle contracts so there's a first class lever another good example would be a pair of scissors uh, this first class lever would actually increase the distance that your force was applied over because the load arm the resistance arm is longer than the effort arm or very similar but um, used for a different purpose we have a nut cracking uh, pair of pliers here and our effort arm is much longer than our resistance arm and I guess this would actually effort arm would go all the way to the fulcrum here so this effort arm is longer than our resistance arm and this would multiply the force we applied but apply it over a shorter distance but that's also a first class lever okay second class levers a second class lever is one where the fulcrum is on one edge the resistance force is in the middle and the effort force is on the outside in a second class lever the input arm which we measure from the fulcrum to the input force is always longer so we're going to call that the input than the output arm which is also measured from the fulcrum to the output uh, force. So these always increase the amount of force you apply, but apply it over a smaller distance. If I lift this up, I have to apply the force over a larger distance. Then the block moves, but it multiplies the force that I can apply. Let's look at some examples. Uh, so a wheelbarrow is a classic example. The fulcrum would be the wheel here. The load is the dirt in the wheelbarrow and the effort is where you lift up on the handles of the wheelbarrow. Um, this nutcracker is an example of a second class lever. We have the fulcrum on one end. The load is in between the effort and the fulcrum. And finally your heel is a good example in your calf muscle of a second class lever. So your uh, fulcrum is on one side right here. The load which would be right over the bone right here where most of the weight is is actually in between the effort force where this muscle pulls and the fulcrum. So we have a longer input distance than we do an output distance and it increases the amount of force you can apply. Alright, last type of lever, third class levers. Third class levers look a lot like second class levers with the fulcrum out on one edge but we flip the resistance and the effort force. So now we apply our effort in between the fulcrum and the resistance. So now our input arm is shorter, so there's the input arm, is shorter than the output arm, just the opposite of second class levers. So third class levers always decrease the amount of force you apply, but apply it over a larger distance. So.
if I lift over a short distance from here to here, the object would move a much larger distance, but I would actually have to apply more force than this object weighs. So if this object weighed 10 newtons, I might have to lift with the force of 30 newtons back here. Let's see, 30 newtons. Okay, so that's a third class lever. Again, let's look at some examples. First one would be your bicep. Um, your bicep has a much shorter input arm. So if here's the fulcrum, our input arm only goes to right where that muscle attaches. So that input uh, distance is much shorter than the output distance, which goes clear out to where this weight sits. So if you're trying to lift a 10 pound ball out here, your bicep is going to have to contract with a lot more force than 10 pounds, maybe 50 pounds or more. However, what do we get out of it? Your bicep shortens just a little bit, and this ball moves a long ways. So we get more distance out of it. So just because a machine doesn't multiply the amount of force you can apply doesn't mean it's not useful. Our bicep is a very useful machine. Another good example would be uh, these chopsticks. The fulcrum is on one edge at the back of the chopsticks. The effort is applied in between the load and the fulcrum. Um, a baseball bat is another good example of a third class lever. The fulcrum would be back here where it pivots. So this would be the fulcrum. The effort force is where you grab the bat with your hands. And the output would be where the balls hit out here at the end of the bat. So once again, our output arm is longer than our input arm in a third class lever. Okay, to sum it up, there are three different types of levers. There is a first class lever with the resistance on one side, the fulcrum in the middle, and the effort on the other side. By the way, a first class lever is also the only lever that actually changes the direction of the force you apply. You push down, um, it pushes up on the other side. Um, first class levers can either increase or decrease. So either increase or decrease the amount of force you apply. Then we have, sorry, I'll write this down. It's a first class lever. We have second class levers. In a second class lever, the fulcrum is on one side, and the resistance is in between the effort and the fulcrum. And these always increase the force you apply. And then we have a third class lever. where the effort is in between the resistance and the fulcrum, and these always decrease the force you apply. Okay, that's it. Those are our three types of levers. Turn into part two for a few sample calculations.